Okay. Good morning or good evening, whatever time of day it is, we we know that this is the day of the Lord and uh, this is the the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, regardless of uh, circumstances, and regardless of the way we feel, we have we have joy within our heart because joy is a fruit of the spirit and that we can stir up. It tells us as in the Bible that stir up the gift of God that is within you. And so you know you can stir up joy purposely um, stir it up, purposely command joy to come. Even in the midst of all turmoil, God says, stir up the gift that abides within you and bring forth joy. In James chapter 1, it says, Can it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that is the trying of your faith that worketh or activates patience? So you can stir it up and you can say you are joyful in the Lord and you say it by faith, it becomes a living reality that will work for you. Amen. So we have a, a song and it's all by faith. Everything we do is by faith and faith pleases God. Not our works, you understand, and not what we do in the flesh. It will not please God. But if we do something by faith, like stir up joy, when that's the last thing you want to do, uh, and you look at circumstances, you say, woe is me. But if you stir up the joy that is in your heart, in James chapter 1, we'll say it again. It says, count it all joy. It didn't say count all the, the calamities that you've gone through. And we've gone through a few calamities over the last few weeks and it's been a terrible, terrible thing uh, to bring us down. However, we stir up joy by faith and as we do it before the world who looks at us, then they know it's going to work, you see. And we know it's going to work because many times We've had a choice of whether to have joy or whether to have a sadness experience. And, uh, and today is without any exception. So we stir up joy that is set before us. And we decide that we are not going to allow circumstances to bring us down or to make us sad. We're going to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that is the trying of your faith that worketh or activates patience. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. All right. And therefore, and then that was James chapter 1, in case people don't understand. James chapter 1 and a few, a few verses of, of James chapter 1. Um, and therefore, in Romans 5, we have a beautiful song. Uh, we sing it by faith and uh, it becomes a living reality that will work for you. Amen. Uh, and just for those of people who may not know me or may not have heard of us before, we are the Word of Faith Ministers and right here in where are we? Durick. <laughs> we just moved to a new location. Uh, and this location, we're going to call ourselves the Faith Restoration Church, according to Acts 2, 41 to 47. And uh, so that is where the church originally started, in the house. And if we're all, I'm speaking to all the house meetings around the world, whoever's tuned in today, you are right on target, because God says, I will restore again the tabernacles of David. Hallelujah. And what is the tabernacles of David? Is that King David had a revelation that one day, and that day is now, one day 
there coming a time where it don't have to be a king or a priest, you know. King David was the one that was allowed to go into the holies of holies. And the priest, high priest, was allowed to go into the holies of holies and bring sacrifice before God. This is in the, in the old days when they had the tent, you know, and they took in the blood of bulls and goats and presented it before God as an offering, a, a sin offering or a sin covering, um, atonement for sin. And uh, therefore, Jesus Christ was a perfect sacrifice to do away with all the other sacrifices, to do away with bulls and goats and all of that, you know, the blood of animals. Uh, now we have the blood of Jesus. He was the perfect sacrifice. And it says in Hebrews 4.16, Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help of a time of need. And so we need to know that we are righteous. We need to know that we are accepted in God and that we don't have to die, but we do have to present ourselves to him as a sacrifice. Yeah? But it's a, we are the sacrifices that don't die we get to present our bodies to him. In Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2, you present your body to God, a living sacrifice. See, living sacrifice, meaning you don't have to die. But you do have to present yourself. And you know, there are a lot of Christians that will not present themselves because they're, fright they're frightened. They have fear. And fear is not love. Perfect love will cast out all fear. So if you love God this morning, you present yourselves to him a living sacrifice. Be not afraid because God is not going to kill you. Even though we deserve to die, there is one that died for us who was? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So because of Jesus Christ dying for us, we don't have to die. But we do have to present ourselves. So Lord, we present ourselves now, a living sacrifice, and we pray, Lord, that we'll be not conformed to this world, but we'll be transformed as we renew our mind, for this is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And it goes on, you know, Romans 12. Now, in Romans chapter 5, we're going to sing. We're going to attempt to sing. All right. Thank you for the Facebook viewers uh, that are growing. Wonderful. And of course, we have uh, approximately 8,000 contacts on our mailing system whereby we send the recordings to our mailing system. If you want to be on our mailing system, you can send us an email. Or you can tune in to trafficbuilder3.com and see all our videos there. And uh, also you see a place where you can send us a message, a prayer request, or your own email where we can send you one of our books, which is all there on that website. You'll see the books, you'll see the videos, and you'll see uh, a mailing list. Uh, you can be on. And so, uh, so we'll sing this song. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith. Much more. 
chapter 5 verse 1 so therefore being justified by faith we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and it goes on and as you read down you'll see um, uh, for uh, in verse 5 you can read it down there and hope make us not be ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, so Christ died for us even though we were ungodly. And uh, now we live by faith in righteousness because God says that we're righteous um, in many scriptures but uh, the first scripture that came to my heart uh, in 1982 to 84 was that um, I'm a new creation Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Romans 5.17. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 5.17. I'm a new creation. Yeah. It's no longer I that we live, but I that we 
hallelujah. How long the ride that liveth to it, but Christ that liveth in me. talk a bit more about righteousness but before I get round to doing that um, I'm going to ask Joshua to come and uh, read a, a paragraph or a couple of pages of an article that I put together a long time ago and it's in I don't think it's in all of my books but it's in uh, a couple of my books um, and this is put together by myself and, uh, and my colleagues of Word of Faith Ministries International Australia. And we're talking about righteousness. We do have a little song to go with it, but I only have developed the chorus. So we'll sing that chorus after the reading. Thank you, Joshua. With my son, my only son, and uh, he's a very good reader that I'm not. So, continue. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Trisha Brian Richards. Um, today I'm going to be reading a ex excerpt from um, from one of Dad's books. You can buy Dad's books at trackbooter2.com and subscribe to Dad's mailing list at RevBrianRichards.com. You can subscribe on YouTube, Vimeo, or Daily Motion. Um, and press the notification bell to be notified of every time I upload a video. Okay. Are you righteous? If you see yourself as unworthy or having to earn right standing with God, it's time to learn the truth about righteousness. Do you know the truth about righteousness? One thing holding more Christians in bondage than anything else is a lack of understanding righteousness. That's why every day of your life on this earth Satan is going to try to convince you that you don't have any right to do the things of God. He's going to try to bring you out, bring you into bondage again, to sin in order to control your life. But you won't be able to do it if you awaken yourself every day to who you really are in Jesus. Righteousness is a big concept and can often seem complicated to understand. A host of different doctrines flying around doesn't help either. But it is critical that we as Christians take the time to discover the truth about righteousness so we can live a life filled with faith and free from hindrances. We're about to bust open the door that has held Christians back for far too long. If you've been stuck on the other side of what belongs to you in Christ Jesus, failing to receive everything he has for you, buckle your seatbelt because you are about to go into hyperspeed from uncertainty to full-blown, Holy Ghost, fire of God, faith. What is righteousness? Traditional thinking confuses righteousness with holiness. Many people never stop to ask the question, what is righteousness? They think they already know the answer and believe in righteousness is the way you act. But this is not true. Holiness is your conduct. Righteousness is what you are, the nature of God. In other words, righteousness is not a goody-goody way of acting or something that can be attained. The word translated righteousness literally means right standing. We have been put in right standing with God through the works of Jesus at Calvary. When a person accepts Jesus, he or she is moved into a position of new birth and enters into the kingdom of God as God's very own child and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. 
and it is critical that Christians begin to see themselves as righteous because there is power in their knowing the truth about righteousness. Faith is a force, love is a force, hope is a force, but did you know righteousness is also a force? If you begin to look at righteousness as a force, it will help you in your thinking, receiving and operating in it. If you break down the truth about righteousness into bite-sized pieces and take it for what it is, rather than what you've heard in church all your life, something is going to change on the inside of you. Something powerful is going to rise up and start declaring, rebuking, reclaiming, unshackling, enforcing, receiving and rejoicing in the power and righteousness of the Lord Almighty that has been given to you. If you are ready to undo wrong thinking, put back the pull back the religious curtain and see your God-given identity for what it really is. It's time to learn the truth about righteousness. Number one, you can't earn righteousness. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Romans chapter 3 verses 22. Do you struggle with feeling good enough for God? Good enough for his blessings and favor? Maybe you're working to live a righteous life through works and even comparing yourself to others in hopes of finding some place where you will finally feel like you deserve to be called righteous. Here's something that, many mess, that might mess up your theology. You can't earn righteousness because you are already righteous. You might be thinking, well I don't feel righteousness, but that doesn't make it any true. The moment you were born again, you became righteous. Not perfect, not holy, but righteous. Right with God. How? By faith in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 22. God's gift to the world was when Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God. In him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 We who knew sin were made righteous when we were born again and became new creatures. Are you born again? When you are all right with God, now there may be some things in your life that need to change, but you are right with God. Righteousness is not, con it's not connected to, your, to our conduct. You can't earn righteousness with good behaviour. It comes only through faith in Jesus Christ, and it's for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Romans 3.22 that is a powerful and miraculous truth that will change your life forever when you really get a revelation of it. So in spite of anything you've heard or believed, the truth is, righteousness is a free gift. You're righteous because God said you are righteous. You don't need to take a vote on it. Dad, want to come back on it? Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, what, we, what we're preaching and what we're teaching it is not religion, it is a relationship. And you know, I mean, maybe some of the examples that I, I give um, are not, uh, other people would not identify with or the relevance of it. But you become Righteousness of God because of the blood of Jesus and because of your because of his acceptance of you and you have asked Jesus to be your saviour you've asked Jesus to be your healer you've asked Jesus into your life and you become a new creation. The Bible says a new creature or a new species of being that has never ever lived before. And that's in the, the Greek concordance um, of uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, therefore if any man now it's not just for men, it's for any man, meaning mankind, meaning man, women, child, you know, any mankind. 
anybody who is mankind. Are you mankind? Even if you're a woman, even if you're a child, if you're mankind, if you're kind of a man <laughs> on the earth, you could be born again today by accepting the sacrifice that has already been paid. Nothing has to be done, it's already done. It's up to you to accept what has been done for you. See, Jesus didn't have to come back and put him on a cross again. Jesus is coming back, all right. And let's hope very soon before the world destroys itself. However, Jesus is coming back and it'll be perfect timing when he does come back. But he's not coming back to be crucified again because you need to be saved. No. The price has already been paid and he's not going to pay that price again. Thank God. Doesn't need to because it was done for all, for all time. If I ask you to go down the street and pick up the television set that has been paid for by me, when you get there and they say, oh, you know, yes, there's a television set here with your name on it. They say, oh, well, that's great, it's got my name on it. And then they say, um, uh, cost $500. And you go, oh. And they say, no, you don't have to give us the $500. You're just telling them what it costs, you know. Oh, okay. And if you try to pay, they say, look, we can't accept that. It's already been paid for. And, and so, but I would like to contribute. Well, you can. <laughs> You don't see us, you go and see the one who paid the price, Jesus. He paid the price. You see. But if it was me, and, and you, you look at, you say, well, look, you go and see Brian Richard, he's the one who paid for that, you know. And see, in, in, in modern day terms, you know, they're not going to accept that Jesus has paid the price, but you do. You know that Jesus paid the price and therefore you can do it for others. So we pay the price by going to evangelize. You know, it costs us something to do that. And Christ or the Spirit of God makes sure that we've got the goods to deliver that person from darkness into light. But you see, he's done it already. And we just have to follow and use the tools that are given us. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. And so we put on the full armor of God, and any time we're afflicted is because we've forgotten to put on the full armor of God. And you'll see in, in Ephesians 5 or 6, I think it is, uh, the armor of God that we have to put on. Let's, have, let's go there. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Thank you, Lord. So we see in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Lots of things stuck in my pages. In Romans 6, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It doesn't mean, you know, people, they do get in the way and they get annoying sometimes, and uh, we start to get annoyed with them. But we have to remember that it's not the flesh and blood that we're fighting. It's the spirit that is driving that flesh and blood uh, against you, you know. So we look at people that would try to afflict us in some way and we think there's the spirit that is driving them to say what they're saying to afflict you. 
Okay. And he said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What evil day? Every day is evil if you if you look for it. But we're not looking for the evil in people. We look at people with the goodness in them. And if we look for the goodness rather than the evil that is in them, then we'll have compassion, we'll have mercy, and we'll have the love of God. So it's not the flesh and blood that we're fighting, but it's the spirit that makes them ugly. You know? The spirit that in them that needs to be changed. And change is not changed until it's changed, you know. And when a person is born again, they definitely change from darkness to light. And that is the miracle of God. So wherefore, we take unto us, yeah, take unto you the full armour of God. It says the whole, it means full. The whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand against the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. What does that mean? Having done all to stand, stand therefore. See, we know sometimes we've done all that the Bible is telling us to do and it, you know, it would appear like nothing has changed. But He's saying there, stand therefore, meaning hold fast to that which you have learned, hold fast to your confession of faith, hold fast to the word of God that says, speak to the mountain and be thou removed and cast into the sea and believe that you receive when you pray. Hold fast to the confession of faith, hold fast to the promises of God. Hold fast to that word and that word doesn't change but the circumstances will change. And so we hold fast and we stand therefore having our loins gird about with truth, having on the breast, breastplate of righteousness and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, say above all. Above, above all. all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Every fiery dart of the what? Wicked. wicked, you see. And sometimes we look at people as wicked people. And they are, in, a, in some ways, but it's the spirit that is wicked in them. It's the spirit that is in them, the driving them to say what, they, what appears to be ugly, what appears to be lies against you, what appears to be uh, weapons formed against you, which they are, but we can overcome that if we put on the helmet of salvation, though he says. Why a helmet of salvation? Because the helmet protects the mind. And the mind is the battleground. The real battleground is in the mind. So you won't get afflicted by the flesh. we got laws against that. But the weapons of the warfare will come against you and they come against your mind. Now, if people can beat you in the mind, they can beat you everywhere else. Muhammad Ali, what's his name? Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, is it? Muhammad Ali proved that to the world. He said he's, he used to make up nursery rhymes about his opponent. And his opponent you get them fearful before they even step in the ring. And if they can get that man in doubt that whether he could win or not, he's already defeated. You see? And, and Muhammad Ali knew that. Cassius Clay was his name, uh, was his 
you know, fighting uh, Cassius Clay. And they used to, he used to make nursery rhymes. I'm going to defeat you in the six, and you know, get you to get the fix comes in number six, and all this sort of thing. And and most of his opponents, they was defeated before they got in the ring, and before he even laid a glove on them. And they sometimes they only just hit them gently, and, uh, and they just you know went to pieces. Uh, and so this is what happens to the enemy also. Your enemy, make no mistake about it, your enemy is spiritual and it, it is wicked and it is of the devil. See? Sometimes they haven't got the devil in them, but they got demons related to the devil. See? And so that is the enemy. But if you defeat it in the mind, you get defeated everywhere else. Okay, where are we? Helmet of salvation. Verse 17, take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is which is the word. the word of God. See? Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, you speak the word. You don't speak your feelings. Oh, I don't like that. That, that didn't, I don't feel good about what you just said. That's not going to do anything. That's not going to change anything. That's only going to start a fight. But your fight and your weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And you speak that Word of God, and uh, that Word of God will go forth like the sword, and it'll cut and uh, pierce the joints of the marrow and the intents of the person's heart. Right? You tell Jesus is Lord, Jesus is my Lord, and I love you in Jesus' name, they'll just go to pieces. You know? Sometimes that's all you need to say. But I love you. And they say, why do you love me? I'm speaking ugly to you. You know? That tell you. <laughs> uh, but praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now you can pray in the flesh, but if you get spiritual and you start to pray in the spirit, you'll pray the word of God. You see, this is the best way to pray. Pray the word of God, and then you pray. In, you know you're praying in the spirit because the word and the spirit agree. Okay, so you pray the word of God, and you when you run out of English words. It says that he who knows not how to pray as he ought, in Romans 8, it says, when you know not how to pray as you ought to pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Well, what is the Holy Ghost, you see? Well, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost yet, in Acts 19, verses 1 to 5, you'll see that uh, Paul and Apollos went into Ephesus, and to congratulate the people that have received Jesus. And, uh, and Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? I said, we've not so much have heard there be any Holy Ghost. So in what name or in what, you know, how was you baptized? And they said, we're baptized according to John the Baptist. And they said, well, that's good for repentance. In other words, you are saved. But now you need to be baptized in Jesus' name to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You see? So you can't pray in the Holy Ghost without receiving the Holy Ghost. Otherwise you're a counterfeit, you know? But if you are praying already in tongues and you believe that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, what's wrong with you being baptized in Jesus' name? You know? They say, I'm already filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, if you believe that, why would you say no to being baptized in Jesus' name? Because the Word of God says that in Acts 19. You see, I, it, it, it astounds me. It, it, I'm surprised by so many people who have their back up and they fight me against water baptism in Jesus' name. Why would you want to do that? The Word of God says 
if you want the Holy Spirit, be baptized in Jesus' name. You see that? Why be baptized any other way when that was the old way, the Old Testament way? They say, well, Jesus was baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He says, go into the world and baptize other people in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That was during the Old Testament procedures, you know. But the New Testament, in Acts 2.38, you'll see where they spoke in tongues and they came out and said, okay, you convicted us, what do we do? And they said, you'll be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You and all your households shall be saved if you do it that way. You can put your faith on that. But you see, it's People are so afflicted with a wrong spirit, they speak out of a wrong spirit to you. And we have to stay in love because that's the only way of winning them to the Lord. But it becomes terribly frustrating when you know that they need the Holy Spirit and you're trying to help them and they're too stuck on their religious doctrines and that's what it is it's a religious doctrine if they had a true relationship with the lord jesus christ they'd have a relationship with this word and they'd know that that is the right way to do things so praying praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for saints. Verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador. You can put your name there. For which Brian is an ambassador. For which Elanette is an ambassador. For which Joshua is an ambassador. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> in this country, thank God, you're an ambassador and you can be an ambassador on the street anywhere uh, and you won't end up in jail. A lot of countries you will. And including where uh, the Apostle Paul, he says, uh, for I am an ambassador but in bonds. So he's in, he's in bondage. He went to jail. That herein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I do, and goes on. And so, you're praying in the Spirit, you should be praying the Word. And when you run out of the words to pray, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. It says in, in Romans 8, talking about the whole chapter of Romans 8 is talking about how to walk in the spirit how to pray in the spirit how to stay in the spirit and how to stay in love Jude chapter 20 it says that you can stay in love by praying in the Holy Ghost when I first became a born again Christian filled with the Holy Spirit I was in a, uh, a Bible study one time and I said to this group I said I wish I could be like you and they said what do you mean you wish you could be like us I was probably the youngest Christian in the room but they all knew that I was born again and they said you are exactly like us you're born again you're spirit filled you've done everything right what why would you think you any different? And this is why I got Joshua to read out the righteousness. See, where we fail in righteousness, we will fail in everything else. But if you really know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then you stand up for yourself, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You stand up in the spirit, and you speak the word of God like fire, you know, 
your words become powerful. And in the Old Testament, there was ministers of fire that spoke fire words. You know, Elijah called fire down from heaven. You know, but we're living in the New Testament where we're sophisticated, you know, and we don't want to speak ugly to people. We speak words of love. Well, what, what could be more loving than speaking the word of God that will deliver a person from darkness into light? That's more loving than anything I, I can recall. But you see, when you compromise and you're, oh, I just want to be nice and, you know, you be nice and you, you, you huggle them and all that, and give them a, a hug and all this sort of thing, but you don't tell them the truth. You see, if you don't use the word of God, you are not telling them the truth. But this is how you keep yourself in love. It's in Jude 20, 20 it says, how that they, uh, in, in Jude chapter 20, there's only one chapter, but in verse 18, you see, how that they told you that there would be muckers in the last time. We see that, don't we, all the time. Muckers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These, that they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. And he's not talking to the world here. He's talking to the body of Christ, the so-called body of Christ. People that are say they're Christian, but they, they separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit, meaning not the spirit of God. Capital S means the Holy Spirit. Okay. And verse 20 it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. What is praying in the Holy Ghost? By praying the Word, and when you run out of the Word, then you pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. In Romans 8 it says, He who knew not how to pray as you ought, pray in the Holy Ghost. So you pray in tongues. And then you know you're praying the perfect will of God. See, Romans 8, you, you read Romans 8, the whole chapter, and you'll know how to walk in love, how to walk in the Spirit, how to pray in the Spirit, and be effective. And so, I, uh, I was in this meeting and I, was, I said, I wish I could be like you. And they said, you are exactly like us. You are the righteousness of God. You're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And they said, I said, but you are so loving compared to me. I'm not loving like you. And they said, this scripture here, build yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 21, keep yourself in the love of of God. See that? By praying in the Holy Ghost, by praying in tongues, you keep yourself in the love of God, looking for mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion making a difference. You want to make a difference? Praise God. I'll tell you what, I'm fed up of being religious. I want to make a difference. And how you make a difference is by doing, being a doer of the Word of God, not just a, a forgetful hearer. In James chapter 1 it says, don't be just a, a hearer of the Word of God, but be a doer of it. And therefore we say, I'm a doer of the Word of God, I'm blessed in all my deeds, I'm happy in those things which I do because I'm a doer of the Word of God. See, if you say that, you will receive exactly that, because that is the promises of God out of the book of James. Okay, so I've said enough. Uh, this is just an introduction today of uh, righteousness and how we should be thinking, how we should be acting, how we should believe that we receive when we pray. Hallelujah.
Now I'm going to hand over to my lovely lady, and if you haven't seen her before, Elegant Richards is, uh, is uh, my assistant here, and she's a very good, loving person, pastor, all the things that I desire to be, she is. <laughs> Hello? Uh, hello? Welcome to our Facebook Live. My name is Ernest Richards, a wife of Reverend Brian Richards. And I would like to introduce to you our new banner here in, in front. <laughs> we call Jesus in Philippians 2.9. This banner is given by our best friend, Pastor Best Friend. He's our mentor and advisor. So you're gonna read that scripture? Yes. And I would like to read that scripture. Hallelujah. So the scripture in Philippians 2 9 it says Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. What's the name? Jesus. That's the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Joshua, and please, and Brian, shake, shake, shake. <laughs> we sing a song. In Jesus' name, God is fighting for us. He's carrying our burdens. And look, 11, 9, 10, it says, And I tell you, God says, Us, and it will give in to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. says and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name and he said he will do it. God is fighting for us. God is on my side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. We got some. We got some competition. I think. <laughs> we can hear some cars revving behind us. Okay. Hallelujah. I think we uh, just about out of time, but uh, we'd like to pray for some people now. Um, those people that have never heard the message that we give today about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And they'd like to experience um, what salvation is all about. And this, we're not asking you to join a church. We're not asking you to join some uh, religion. We're asking you if you want a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the Word of God. The Bible is our teacher. Jesus is a manifestation of that word who came and paid the price for our salvation. If you've never received Jesus into your life, we'd like to pray for you now. If you have a, a need, not only for salvation, but for healing and deliverance of an infirmity in your body, um, I know I've uh, received many infirmities over the past years and even crippling pain in the bones uh, whereby I received healing, supernatural healing from God where doctors could not do anything for me then God was the one who gave me strength and gave me deliverance from infirmities that have been holding me in bondage for most of my life. So this, he said that you go in my name and preach the word and I'll be with you always even to the end of of the world and I pray pray for many that have been sick with infirmities that doctors have given up even people that have had terminally ill um, infirmities cancer of the brain cancer of the lungs and cancer of the uh, uh, what they call it, the prostate cancers uh, and, and, and the heart conditions. You know, I, I pray for a lot of different people who claim that I'm a healer, but I'm not a healer. Jesus is the healer. I'm a believer and these signs follow me because I believe. And Jesus said that, you know, you go in my name and I'll be with you always. So he's with us by his spirit. Even when we don't feel like it, even when it doesn't look like, we can believe that we can receive right now. In Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10, it says that if you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, rose again from the dead, then you can be saved. It says uh, in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, it says that you can believe in your heart that Jesus rose again from the dead. Um, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus rose again from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and by your confession, by your words, is made unto salvation. So what you say about this gospel today depends on your future now. Whether you want a future to be with Christ, with Jesus Christ, and 
Christ is not Jesus' second name. Christ means the anointing of Jesus. So, if any man be in Christ, in their anointing, he's a new creation. All things pass away, all things become new, and all things are of God. So, if you want to receive Jesus into your heart right now, I want you to say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe Jesus died on the cross. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I ask him to be my Lord. I ask you to be my Lord. And my Savior. My Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And make me born again. And make me born again. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To walk in righteousness. To walk in righteousness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Father God, I pray for all those that are sick. All those that are sick and really they need the touch from you, Lord. We pray that by the stripes of Jesus. The word of God will bring healing and deliverance to those believers. And by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. For the word of God is life to you. Health and healing to all your flesh, bones, sinews, muscles. Be totally restored now. Cancer, when I speak to you, I command you to leave this body. Be loosed from all infirmities now. Hallelujah. Brain cancer. Leave in Jesus' name. Heart failures. He says in the last days there will be men's heart fail because people will die an early death because of heart failure. These are the last days we hear of people dying of heart failure all the time. I pray, Lord, for your strength. Pray, Lord, for your healing. Those that are reach out now for healing and a touch from Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, touch them afresh. Let the anointing come upon them, Lord. A healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name, be loose from that infirmity. Hallelujah. The prostrate glands. The prostrate infirmities. We speak to them right now. We command them to be loosed from the body. Be cast out. Let the healing power of God touch and bring a release in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for people that would say to me, thank you for healing. It's you, Lord God, who's the healer, and I'm just the vehicle for you. I thank you in Jesus' name for many good reports. Hallelujah. We have to go. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, you can watch us on uh, YouTube and you can see us live by Facebook. Uh, what's the difference? Well, Facebook is live. We can't change that. But this one here, I can um, change it and. Um, Put the scriptures as we as we watch it. You can see the scriptures that we talk about, and you can see uh, websites and things like that. So um, we thank you for today. If you turn up maybe again next week and tell somebody else that we're available. And the reason why we do this is to make ourselves available to wherever would open up to us. If you open up your church, we will come and minister live. And uh, those countries that would like to see us, um, we ask you to participate in uh, giving by donations so we can get there and minister to you live. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye for now.